Hi everyone and welcome to another live safe tool video. In this video we're going to go over the projection um, functionality of the list online platform. So as you can imagine the first thing to do will be to come over to the projection and click create. We're prompted to give our projection a name so we're going to go ahead and call it Senegal 2005 to 2015. The country of interest, you will have guessed, is going to be Senegal. Um, we'll go over how to do a subnational projection in a different video, um, but for now we're going to do a national level projection, so there's nothing to modify here. Um, this is just information letting us know that the most recent um, D, uh, DHS or, or mix or default data source in list really um, is a DHS that was done in 2017. You'll guess that the years that I'm interested in are 2005, which I can do by, uh, I can select by moving my first year down to 2005 and my final year down to 2015. And finally, if I wanted to add some notes, I have the option to do that here. So I could add my name, my organization name, and any relevant notes um, that I might have for this projection. This comes in handy when you're doing a high volume of projections. For our purposes today, we don't need to do that. We can just go ahead and click Create Projection. And then the online platform will communicate with the server for uh, a few seconds in order to retrieve all of the data necessary to do the calculations that we will shortly be asking Liz to do. So now that it's finished running, you can see up here the title of my projection, so I know that I'm in the right one. If I wanted to save it, um, I first have to log in, which I'm not going to do on this video but there is a possibility to create an account and then save your projections to that account online. So step two, really, um, after I've created my projection, given it a name, etc., I can now select the interventions that I'm interested in. So by default, these accordions are open so that we can see all of the possible interventions that we can look at. Um, and also all of my outcomes are, are turned on. If I was interested in a particular intervention, I can search for it here. So we're going to use malaria as an example here. So I know that ITN is an intervention that I'm interested in. I can select it here. Once I'm, I've selected it here, I can also see that it's popped up in my list of my interventions. If, for example, um, I had selected multiple interventions that I was no longer interested in, so <clears throat> let's say all of these, and then I realize, no, actually, I didn't, I didn't want to keep all of these, I can just hit the clear button and they all go away. Uh, another way to go about it is to turn off the outcomes. And right now, the way that I've, I have it set up, only interventions that have an impact on child mortality will appear in the list um, here. So this is like a subsection of the complete list of interventions. So what I am interested in, I've mentioned before, um, will be, I can just search for them directly, my ITMs. Um, I also want my malaria vaccine, and I also want my ACTs. So I have my three interventions that I've selected here. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with this selection. If I wanted to um, do use the missed opportunity function that is available to me here, this is really where um, this functionality comes in handy a little bit more. So I can see, for example, I can turn these outcomes on and off and see where there are the biggest potential for um, impact by increasing coverage. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to use missed opportunities uh, itself, 
in the online version, you can do so in a separate video. So now that I've selected my interventions, these three down here, I can go up here and click apply. If I wasn't sure which interventions I wanted to use, I also have the option to go to the list visualizer and that will bring me to the list visualizer, as you can imagine. Um, I can search malaria. And this will create um, a graph that will show all of the interventions that have an impact on um, child mortality due to malaria. So this was just a step for me to confirm that these three interventions are the three that are of interest for my, um, for my projection. So now that I've done that, I can come back to my original page and click apply. You'll see down here that coverage, a new box um, came, uh, appeared in my step two. So the next step is to modify the coverage of the interventions that I've selected. When I click it open, you can see these three interventions that I had selected previously appeared over here. I see that malaria vaccine is at zero throughout all of, my, all of the years of my projection, um, and there's a very small uh, co percent coverage of ACTs um, in my country. I would like to increase coverage of um, ITNs to 90%. I would like to increase my vaccine coverage to 50%. And I would like to increase uh, my ACT coverage also to 50%. And in order to make sure that um, this increase is linear over time, I click and drag over the, the cells do a right click and interpolate and it will now do a linear increase from my 2005 value all the way to my 2015 value i will do the same up here so just in case you're following along so that's a right click uh, i didn't quite make it um, a right click first the highlight then a right click, and then interpolate. I can now apply. And so I've completed my step one by selecting my interventions. I've completed my step two by modifying the coverage of those interventions. And now I can move on um, by clicking next. This tab allows you to review all of the default information that list will then use to calculate um, the outputs um, that I, we will be looking at shortly. In most cases, this is not a necessary step. Um, you can just move right along, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, but just so that you know, if you are looking for specific um, effectiveness of your interventions or the household status or uh, maternal health, all, all of these options, you can select them here um, and then that information that LIS is using is going to pop up over here. But we will move right along to calculate and view results. And once again, LIS will run uh, all of the calculations in the background in order to present uh, us with the results of interest. So by default, um, these four results will appear. You have the number of child deaths, the child deaths by cause, the additional child lives saved by intervention, and finally the mortality rates summary. So for each one of these, you can zoom in to these tile cards and then you get a larger bar, bar graph. If a bar graph is not what you're looking to get, you can also get it as a table. Um, you can download this as a table or you can download the image uh, as it is here. You get you by hovering over specific parts of the bar, you can get um, the, the number that this part of the bar is representing. And once again, if you're actually looking to use the numbers 
uh, a little bit more in depth, you can just use the table version um, of, of these data. Similarly, you can do this for all of these different uh, tiles that popped up. Um, you can see your child death by cause, which will vary over the course of your intervention. You'll notice, for example, that malaria um, shrinks over time. So it goes from being um, 1,342 to all the way down to 392 likely due to the increase in coverage of our malaria interventions. If these were not the results that you were interested in, you can, maybe that was a little bit quick, you can come over here to manage selected results, click on the plus sign, and then you can select any one of these interventions that might also be um, of interest to you. Um, so we can, I'm selecting essentially at random, um, and then maybe a selecting one. And once you've completed your selection, go over to apply, and you'll see these uh, additional results show up, additional lives saved, etc., um, show up as individual tiles. And as I've just demonstrated with these earlier versions of the or the first tiles that appeared, you can get all of these data as tables or you can download them as images um, and so on and so forth. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have um, additional questions, um, I would invite you to review how LIST works. Um, there is a multiple part uh, series of videos that explains how the calculations in LIST are done. Um, which applies for the LIST online platform as well as the desktop uh, version. The only difference really is in the presentation uh, and in the ease of use of the platform between the online version and the desktop version. I hope this was helpful to you.